Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. That's the question for today, differentiating x factorial with respect to x. And this video has been requested like for one year by now. Um, and I just couldn't wrap my head around this topic because when looking at it, it looked <laughs> pretty fucking hard. But now that I've read into this topic a bit more, it's actually so freaking beautiful. And I really regret I regret that I didn't look into this more. So yeah, here's a little slap for Papa because he's stupid. Yeah, but we are going to do this today. We are going to differentiate this thing right here. And at first you might ask yourself, Daddy, X factorial differentiating doesn't make any sense. It's a discrete variable. So how would you differentiate something discrete? And here comes my two equals to one proof video into play because there I have defined a discrete mathematical equivalent to our good old differential operator, namely the finite difference. So for starters, we are going to start off with the finite difference of x factorial. Well, this is nothing but x plus one factorial minus x factorial. Just take a look into the description. Maybe there's a video there if you haven't seen the video yet. The cool thing is, factorial is defined in a recursive way. So that's nothing but x plus 1 times x factorial. Meaning we have x factorial as a common factor. We can factor it out. I want you guys to notice x factorial is nothing but 1 times x factorial. Because if you have one apple, then you only have one apple. <laughs> what stupid, stupid ass running joke. So factoring out x factorial leaves us with times x plus 1 minus 1. This and that is going to cancel out. Those are additive inverses to each other. So leaving us with x factorial times x. And for natural numbers n, this right here is a pretty good approximation of the problem. So turns out to be quite nice. But what the hell is it with real numbers, for example? So pi factorial, one half factorial, square root of pi over two, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So. How would you deal with something like this? And there comes uh, comes the continuation of the factorial to the real numbers in, except for negative one, negative two, zero, blah, blah, blah. So there it does diverge. There are certain poles there. But for, for example, the positive reals, well, we can continuously define our x factorial right here using, for example, the gamma function. So if we take a look at gamma of x, well, it would end up to be x minus 1 factorial, but that's not a point right here. You can just make a change of variable, then it really doesn't quite matter. To gamma of x plus 1, then you would actually get x factorial. And that's nothing but the integral running from 0 to infinity of, okay, now I have to think, because in the normal case I'm using z as a variable, because you can actually analytically continue this to the complex numbers in some way. So this is going to give us t to the x minus 1 power times e to the um, negative t integrated with respect to t. And yeah, you can now differentiate this thing right here and basically, yeah, uh, end up with something. I'm going to make a separate video on that because that's actually pretty quite cool. So you can differentiate this using the Leibniz roof integration, just parameterize it in a certain way or just differentiate this. Yeah, it's already parameterized with this x right here. but I have introduced other definitions of the gamma function for this very reason right here. And for this, I would like to take a look at the Weierstrass definition of the gamma function. I have introduced it because it's pretty damn important and it brings together the euler mascheroni constant and our gamma function in itself. So if we take a look at the pure definition, we're going to end up with, okay, one over gamma of x, you can just take the reciprocal on both sides. And it does work out, it's nothing but x times e to the euler mascheroni constant times x times the infinite product from uh, k equals to 1 to infinity of 1 plus this time x over k e to the negative x over k. Like I said, I have to think about it because in normal case I'm using z right here. <laughs> okay, this right here is our Weierstrass definition and you see we can actually just make use of implicit differentiation right here in a second because, yeah, 
it does work wonders. So differentiating an, an integral is not too easy in a normal case because you have to evaluate another integral in the process. But right here we just have to deal with a product really. So either you use the product rule on infinitely many terms or we are going to use implicit differentiation. It's way easier to use the linearity of the differential operator instead of using the product rule because this can get really messy pretty fast. How can we turn products into summations? Well, using our boy, the natural log. So if we take the natural log of a times b, we can actually express it as a functional equation. It's nothing but natural log of a plus the natural log of b. I want you guys to notice something different. By this prop property, we also have this infinite product. So if we take the natural log of an infinite product right here, this, under certain conditions, for example, the positive real is our natural log, is actually continuous, meaning we can take the limit right here to the outside, taking the limit as n approaches infinity, for example, of natural log of a finite product and a finite product of natural logs. Um, no, the finite product of the arguments of the natural log can be expressed as the finite sum of the natural logs with different arguments in itself. Meaning, under certain conditions, we can bring the limit to the outside and then we can actually turn this into an infinite sum of, well, those natural logs right here. Meaning, we can easily get rid of this right here. So if we take the natural log on both sides, the natural log of one over gamma of x, and I'm terribly sorry for my ugly looking gammas. Well, this is gamma to negative one of power. Using natural log properties, we can bring this negative sign to the outside, so that's good. So that's negative, the natural log of gamma of x. So we have this in itself, natural log is easy to differentiate, it's now nothing but. This right here is going to end up with the summation of all those uh, all of those different arguments. So that's the natural log of x plus the natural log of e to the gamma times x, Euler Mascheroni times x. But this right here, natural log and the exponential function are going to cancel out to the argument in itself. Okay? That's pretty easy to confirm, so no real problem there. Like I said, we can break this right here up into plus the infinite summation from k equals to 1 to infinity of the natural log of 1 plus x over k times this natural log, but we can turn this into something additive. So in normal case, you would track the natural log on here and the natural log on here, but you can break this up using this property plus the natural log of e to this argument, like I said before, natural log and e are going to cancel out to the argument itself. So negative x over k. If that's too much for you, my boy out there, or my krill, then take a piece of paper and try this formula out for not infinitely many terms, but for example for five terms. And then you are going to see that this turns out to be this formula right here. So no actual problem there. And from here we can actually make use of implicit differentiation, meaning we are going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. ddx of negative natural log of gamma of x. Now we have to use the chain lu, the chain rule, meaning differentiating the natural log leaves us with 1 over the argument times the inner derivative. So this is going to give us negative the inner derivative, so gamma prime of x, x minus one, x minus one factorial differentiated with respect to x, okay, this is what we want to have in the end, over gamma of x is equal to. Now, like I said, we can actually make use of the um, linearity of our differential operator, so meaning we can just differentiate each part by itself. Natural log of x differentiated is just one over x when we differentiate it, plus. This differentiated is just a constant times x, differentiated is nothing but a constant, plus. Now here comes one little problem. We are taking the infinite sum right here, but as long as this infinite sum converges uniformly, then we can basically just use the linearity once again of the differential operator. Meaning this is nothing but 
the infinite sum, the infinity boy, of ddx of this natural log right here. So ddx of this and ddx of this. If we differentiate that, this is 1 over this argument times the inner derivative, with his, uh, which is nothing but, well, this differentiate with respect to x is 1 over k. So we are going to end up with 1 over 1 plus x over k times 1 over k. Okay, this does simplify quite nicely. And differentiating this with respect to x leaves us with negative 1 over k. Let's, um, yeah, let's rewrite this a little bit. So you see we have this negative sign right here. So let's multiply both sides by negative one because it's not equal to zero. And let's make a little bit more sense of this right here. So overall, gamma prime of x over gamma of x is now nothing but negative one over x, negative gamma. We can distribute this negative sign into here, turning around those signs inside of our infinite sum, plus this infinity boy. Then we have 1 over k, minus, and if we multiply this k into here, we are going to get 1 over k plus x. And this is it. Now you can multiply both sides by gamma of x, and then you actually have the derivative of x minus 1 factorial in this case. Make a change of variable to x plus 1, and then you actually have your derivative of x factorial. And I want to introduce a little new notation right here. This thing right here, this kind of natural log, the derivative of natural log of the gamma function is also called psi or the digamma function of x in this case. You are going to see more notations of this because we have to deal with the polygamma function soon. This right here, this digamma function is the zero of polygamma function. But whenever I want to talk about the digamma function, the psi function, I'm just going to put it like this. That's pretty dope. Keep this in mind. And you can actually rewrite this a little bit more. So if you um, want to take a look at yeah, this x factorial differentiated in itself. So we can make a little change of variable. So psi of x plus 1 is nothing but. Okay, this is going to give us, let me see, negative 1 over x plus 1 minus gamma plus. Um, I'm just thinking, no, we, we are going to do this a little bit differently. I'm not going to plug this in right now. This is just a little bit complementary stuff right here. I want to take a look at this stuff right here at first, okay? Just at this. k is to 1 to infinity of, okay, basically you can break the sum up. So taking the sum of this and then taking the sum of this. I just want to take a look at this part right here. We have this negative sign, doesn't quite matter. 1 over k plus x. And then we have plus 1 over x. Okay, this is something we can actually do. Let me see how we can turn this around a little bit more. You see, 1 over x is nothing but 1 over 0 plus x or x plus 0. Meaning we can actually let our sum run from 0 right here. So this is nothing but a sum running from k equals to 0 to infinity. I just want to make little changes of variable here to, to get rid of this part, for example, right here. Be, because using uh, this yeah, is convenient, but using this formula with one less factor, you could say is maybe a little bit more convenient. So we are going to have 1 over k plus x. Now, we can't really put those sums together anymore because our running index is different. But we can make a little change of index. Let's say we are going to let, um, we want to let it go from 1. So we have to substitute k by um, n plus 1. Okay, so if we plug 0 into here, then our, um, let me see. Let me see, let me see, let me see. <laughs> Um, if we would plug k equals to 0 into here, no, um, k plus 1 has to be equal to n. Okay, if we plug 0 into here, then n is actually going to go from 1. 
okay, I'm terribly sorry for this. And we can actually subtract both sides by one to get that k is nothing but n minus one in this case. So we can plug all the new stuff into here, leaving us with a sum running from n or k, I really don't care. I'm going back to k just because of this running index up here. k equals to one to infinity of one over k minus one plus x. Okay, you see the, this was just some shifting index action, meaning our digamma function of x or our polygamma function of the zero of um, not, not kind, to the zero of polygamma function whatsoever is equal to, okay, we got rid of this part right here. So we have negative oily macaroni constant plus we can bring those two sums together once again. Sum running from k equals to 1 to infinity of 1 over k. Don't forget your negative sign. We have all those negative signs right here. I just disregarded them because, well, it really didn't matter for this problem. Negative 1 over k minus 1 plus x. This is another formulation of our digamma function. And now it is easier to see how we can actually turn this into um, x factorial and its differential. Because if we now make this z change of variable, so digamma of x plus one, we're just going to plug x plus one into here. It's nothing but negative oily macaroni constant, infinity boy of one over k, minus one over, okay, x plus one, this one is going to cancel out, k plus x. And there we go. This right here is our digamma of x plus one, which is nothing but gamma prime of x plus one over gamma of x plus one. And yeah, this is just a derivative with respect to x of x factorial. And this down here is just x factorial. So multiplying both sides by x factorial, you actually get your derivative. There are many applications of this thing. And we're going to apply this thing soon to some stuff. I thank you guys for my chalk. I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend channel if you like. If you want to support the channel a bit more, buy those oil roids I created or support the channel on Patreon. Up until the next video, have a digamma day. See ya. Hopes again. Anton, willst du auch mal einen Zentimeter drauf?